앞으로 From here in Washington, D.C. to St. Louis to Sacramento, it's 9-12 again. And I'm sure the press is going to focus on the numbers, but the only numbers that really matter are 51, 218, and 1. In 51 days, there will be less than 218 Democrats elected to Congress, and one liberal from San Francisco will be out of a job. Truth is, there's nothing that ails this government that couldn't be solved by paying a little more attention to the Constitution of the United States of America. You know, the Pelosi-led Congress is about to get a crash course in the consent of the governed. And we, the governed, do not consent to a government takeover of health care, and we will not rest until we repeal Obamacare. We do not consent to runaway federal spending by either political party. We demand an end to the borrowing and the spending and the bailouts once and for all. And we do not consent to one more failed stimulus bill and we do not consent to higher taxes on any American in the worst economy in 25 years. Raising taxes on job creators won't create jobs. No American should face a tax increase in January, not one. And we will not compromise our economy to accommodate the class warfare rhetoric of the American left or this administration. You know, these are hard times on American families. But it's becoming more clear every day, to paraphrase one of my heroes, a recession is when your neighbor loses his job, a depression is when you lose your job, and a recovery is when Nancy Pelosi loses her job. You know, you've come to our nation's capital at a historic moment in the life of this still young republic. A nation conceived in liberty has come of age in bondage to big government. We've lost respect in the world. We're going broke. The American dream is dying for millions, and our social and cultural fabric is unraveling. People are scared. If we do not succeed in November, all that once was good and great about this country could someday be gone. But we will remember this November and every November that will follow. That not only do our rights come from the Constitution, but our duty to defend those rights is enshrined in the Constitution. You know, November 2nd isn't about controlling the reins of power. It's about reigning in power in Washington, D.C. But this is the moment. Now's the time to take your stand for what makes this country great. And this sight of all of you gathered here and people gathered all across America, this 9-12, is evidence that our best days are yet to come. But as you take to the field in the next 51 days to do freedom's work, not only among the countrymen who gather here today, but let me make you a promise. You will not fight alone. Engraved on the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia are words from an ancient text. And it's where the Liberty Bell gets its name. Those words read, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land. 
and unto all the inhabitants thereof. In the same book, it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Translation? Translation? When we proclaim liberty, when we do freedom's work, we make His work on this earth our very own. Yeah. You will not fight alone. So men and women of the 9-12 March, the time has come to take our stand. We must not be afraid. We must fight for what has always been the source of American greatness, our faith in God and our freedom. And if we hold that banner high, I believe with all my heart the good and great people of this land will rally to our cause. We will win this Congress back in 2010, and we will win this nation back in 2012. We will remember in November. Let's give them a November that they'll never forget.